guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we get kinder, talk about Windows, which is not so kind, uh, find out new ways to get our Taco Bell, and so much more as Podcaster Month continues on Awesome Cast. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome when we live. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast 186, live from the studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to roll, uh, t- getting techy, getting geeky, going to have some fun here for the next uh, hour-ish. Uh, with me on the couch, the terrible twosome of Dudders and Chilla, at K Dudders at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing, guys? Awesome. Pretty good. Do you still have the Windows keyboard over there? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's right here. <laughs> we were talking about how uh, that was almost my awesome thing of the week that you can, you, I, I, you know, finally figured out how to swap the keys <clears throat> when I'm using a Windows keyboard on my Mac because I bought an iMac, so I didn't get another one. Uh, so, so that was that. That was my my sub awesome thing of the week. But also here this week, Ward Miller of Crouching Penguin Productions. How you doing, sir? I'm doing. Awesome. I, I think that's the word that we're supposed to use. Uh, to, is there like a counter that tells how many times we use the word awesome? Not, no, no. We, we're going to have to get an intern to do that for us. Um, okay. Definitely. So the, the word is a fellow podcaster for several years. I think we first met each other at a pod camp, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I want to say it was like Pod Camp Three uh, was my first Pod Camp that I went to, mm-hmm. and, and I, that was the first place I met you. And uh, we we were talking about uh, uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show, and at the time I was doing um, what was I doing then? I was doing a uh, Restaurant Food Fast, mm-hmm. which was a cooking show, and then uh, I met in the future podcast or future Pod Camps. I met. Hutch Bailey and uh, we came up with uh, Steel City Resistance, which he's still running. Uh, I, I stepped back from that. I still manage the uh, the the Facebook page and whatnot, but uh, he's still actually doing the podcast itself. Awesome, awesome, and we actually have uh, Hutch scheduled to join us to talk about that here next week on the Awesome Cast. He's actually uh, your support staff, or you know, not your support, your support in the uh, your fan club here in the in the chat room. I see. Yes, I, I always bring uh, bring fans with me as much as possible, so that I can, you know, at least somebody will be able to back me up, and you know, at least I don't take the, the full brunt of the. Uh, uh, bad comments <laughs> awesome awesome so uh i'm excited to have you on here uh you're, you're, you're joining us on uh podcasting month uh the third of which uh, uh weeks in uh so we're gonna have some fun with this uh, again if you want to join us here on the awesome cast we're recording every tuesday night um to, uh, sorry 6 30 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com uh you can also check us out on twitter at awesome cast we're on facebook we're on google plus check us out on youtube uh for at an awesome cast is the account for that where we like to clip out parts of the show so if you just want to get little bits or share with your friends go check it out there we're going to do some more of those clips uh keep it by says we had some really good responses from that this past week from developers uh so that was that was pretty exciting so we're going to continue that uh so hopefully more people can find us there on youtube uh we're also available in audio forms and video forms on itunes roku blip tv stitcher spreaker so go sign up for us if there's anything big you think we're missing let us know we'll try to get the show on there as well uh hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and you can check out the brand new awesomecast.com with the shiny new standard 2014 wordpress theme but i love it it's so nice um you can go there and, and also on our show notes if we talk about any products for the show we do have links to amazon uh with the affiliate program so uh if you do check out something i know we've talked a few people chilla into chromecast in the last several months. So I think it's rather appropriate. Let's see if we can get a piece of that action. So, so we are talking them into it. So, um, and I know a few people also have checked out hit bliss over the last week. Yeah. Krauss I, I, was talking about during, um, the movie minute earlier tonight in the chat room. So yeah, he was really impressed with it. And it, I think it took him like 20 minutes to get to six bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't so take it long. Perfect. It really doesn't take long at all. Um, and then you're ready for a movie. So you mm-hmm. like, 
work for 20 minutes and <laughs> and, and, and and hipless actually responded to the uh hey and i think you got it on it too we were like hey glad to help you hack it <laughs> <laughs> so uh so that was a lot of fun so let's get started with our awesome thing of the week uh chilla what do you got here so i actually i have a problem with buying tech so i got a new bluetooth headset which is the new jawbone era and it's their version two which it's teeny and i wanted something that was different so i have wraparound headphones that i listen to and use kind of as a as a headset all the time but in the winter time in the cold months there's no way to wear earmuffs over them Mm -hmm. And I wanted something that was small. So this actually is probably, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches tall, probably about an inch and a half deep. And it gets about four hours of battery life, which is perfect for me. And it actually comes with a handy dandy little recharging device. So it, it, it actually fits in here. And it, when you're not using it, you can throw it in here and, and char recharge the device. Um, I like the Jawbone. It does extremely good noise cancellation so if you're in a windy area or on a train or wherever it seems to do pretty well and no one really notices that you're in some weird area and they they can't tell that you're on a meeting for work and and you're you may be wherever um <clears throat> interestingly enough they do do firmware updates so you can plug it in go out to their website and they'll continue to update the device um it actually has a person's voice that can kind of talk to you um which works out well. Um, it'll tell you caller ID that's calling. There's about six different options you can set on what the button does and what a side tap does. So I, I'm, I've been pretty impressed with it so far. I actually had their old model, which gets the, pretty much the same battery life. And for those of you on audio only, you're probably not going to be able to see this. But the size differential is, is a lot... Oh, there you go. There you go. There you it's go. a lot different. So the old one is on top. The new one's on the bottom. Um, the other thing is I am super finicky on how the thing goes in my ear. Mm -hmm. And I really don't like the little flappy tab. Is this what I'm seeing here in the big bird? Like, is this a good representation? Of that yeah, that's, that's the new model. That's the new model. So okay. the new model has like the fits in like the squiggle portion of your ear, which actually keeps it to me keeps it in in there nicely mm -hmm. i couldn't find it in red i really wanted the red one but <laughs> they they didn't have it in red but and, and it actually comes with three alternative ear pieces mm -hmm. so if the if the first one doesn't fit or you want to use a different your left or right ear um you can use that and this actually fits all the way behind my earmuff when i'm walking so you can't even tell that I even have, I even have it in, and people can still pick up on me talking. So I was pretty impressed with it. I uh, I see. It's, it seems like it's a little bit. Um, um, it, it says on the site for uh, you linked Amazon here. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it slips within sli uh, ships within one to two months. Oh, it's apparently very. <laughs> <laughs> it's brand new. It just came oh, okay. out. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so I was fortunate enough to find one, honestly, in a store. I I didn't get it off of Amazon. Um, I happen to be okay, it's walking different. through. It's different if you pick different uh, colors. And the, okay. red, the red one is actually $20 cheaper and uh, looks like it's you could get it tomorrow. <sighs> oh, sorry. Had I known. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's my that's kind of like my pick of the week. I, I don't know if you guys wear Bluetooth devices or mm -hmm. use... I typically don't. Uh, my experience with a Bluetooth device is glass and that's not a good example. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't done it too much with it since getting the earpiece you know every once in a while like the, the one time i did they're like why do you sound so crappy you know it's mm. not it's not really set up for that i don't think yet one so. the one thing that turned me on to to using a bluetooth device over headphones is the the one actually two times that my phone got wrapped up around the headphone cord trying to get it out of my pocket and then got caught and it fell out of my hand and fell on the ground. Hmm. Now, luckily, the screen didn't break in either one of those. The vibration motor went bad mm -hmm. in the one that I ended up dropping, and the other one was okay. But that's where, to me, not having to worry about getting my phone out and or being able to listen to music. That's why I usually use the dual channel. This will shove both channels through one the one side. So if there's something that's in stereo and it's only a left channel or right channel, um, during the audio, 
you will get both channels through the one ear, which I liked. Mm -hmm. yep. And it can connect up to two devices. So I can at work, I can connect to my computer and to my phone, which is also nice. So it's the era by Jawbone. Jawbone. It's on Amazon. We'll have links on the show notes. Uh, and uh, what was that website? Jawbone.com. Well, that's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> forward slash headsets, forward slash era. Dutters, what do you got? Ooh, I've got Taco Bell. Oh, no. I know. Taco Bell is going to start their mobile ordering system, hopefully by the end of the year. Yep. And uh, essentially what it's going to be for p customers is you're going to be able to order and pay through your app and then decide whether or not you're going to go through the drive through or pick it up in store. If you pick it up in the actual Taco Bell, they'll have a separate line for you to go through so it's a faster streamlined process. Uh, it'll also use the GPS in your phone to determine how far away you are and how soon they should start fulfilling your order, which is pretty darn fantastic if you ask me. I'm a big Taco Bell fan. Now they need to deliver. Yeah, if they could just Taco figure that Bell part delivery. out, I would be so happy. I, I haven't even, uh, every time, I haven't even gotten to use the Chipotle one. Yeah, really. Chipotle has one. Uh, McDonald's is working on one. Chick-fil-A is also working on one, hmm. which is pretty fantastic. It's another good place to get really delicious noms. But yeah, that's my awesome thing of the week. So, and I see you have a not-so-awesome yes, thing a not, of the week here. I have a not-so-awesome so thing. Aww. There you go. That's Mad Max. I was eating leftover Mad Max, and I flung my fork across my keyboard, and it's all over my screen. You really can't tell, but... Is that a white MacBook? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's actually, if you look there, it is Hello Kitty duct tape along the bottom. Nice. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, where the... I still, have, I still have that MacBook, too. You get the little crack from the actual screen. Yeah, the, the edges the, just peel yeah. right off. And then uh, it's, it hurts if you put your hand on here after oh. a while. So that's why the, uh, the bumper, the Hello Kitty duct tape bumpers are at the bottom there. But everything cleaned up well. Um, I actually can, I've used 409 to clean up my white MacBook before, <laughs> which is probably horrible and I should you know, not I'm be on my show. I, I don't know if you've guys seen my, my MacBook Pro. It's, a, it's an 09 and it is like dirty. <laughs> it's like, I was, it, it cleans it right up because I, I, I have a bad habit of eating and using my, my laptop. So it's usually stained either from eating like hot wings mm -hmm. or pizza. There's, you can see what keys I use the most. How about buffing out dents? Ooh. I got a few of those. I, I, the whole corner of my laptop is actually broken off because I, I launched it down a set of stairs. Not on purpose. But it's still ticking. <laughs> yeah, I have no complaints. This thing is knock on wood. I, it's, it's been, I've had it for a long time. I think it's at least six or seven years old. I think that mine. Been. Yeah, mine the fan's going bad and it makes this horrible grinding noise the whole time <laughs> you use it. But what it works. It? It's the last of the white. Mm-hmm. Oh, on, Mac, on the, the MacBook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's no pro, no, no pro, no <laughs> air, no. Mm -mm. no if you put the DVD in, it sounds like it's eating it. Like it's like <laughs> drum, drum. it's a horrendous. It plays. It just it makes a horrendous noise. You're like, what's wrong with it? <laughs> I was. I tried to take it apart, but one of those screws is stripped on the inside, so mm -hmm. I can't get the fan fixed. No, but yes. Awesome. So now we're an advertisement also for MacBooks, <laughs> the old guys, <laughs> the old ones. Well, we kind of we kind of are. Mac, uh, uh, you know, you run Windows now. I hey hey whoa 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 whoa. Let's let's take that back a minute. I want, I'm running Windows 8 against my will. Okay, it was just it's just <laughs> I got stuck with it. Okay, I'm not happy about it. I don't know why it just restarts randomly through the week. I'm trying to get get something to notify me when it does something like that. Uh, not not terribly happy with it. I have not updated 8.1. I'm, I'm afraid to. Well, see, I've had... I, I got a question about that. Okay. Uh, you know, because I see that there's a, a bunch of stuff coming up, you know, in the notes about the the ThinkPad and, the, and Windows 8. And I, just a quick um, survey. Well, let's do a survey real quick. Uh, how, many is, uh, how many people have actually used Windows 8? Show of hands. Show of hands. For your audio, there you go. So, so okay, three out of four for audio. There you go. Three, three out of the four. How many en enjoyed the experience? <laughs> On a touch device? Yeah, it depends. That that's a loaded question. Yeah, that no, it, it, no, no, no. It, as far as uh, in being intuitive. Okay, so here's the thing. If you were to take a, a touch device, we'll take a touch device. You hand a touch device to someone that's in their, their late 30s, early 40s, that's been a Windows user since Windows 3.1, and said, here, be productive. 
What would happen? Uh, I know my mom doesn't take to it too well. Now my grandfather, after being shown a couple of the touch things, got it like nothing. Now see, I if you go back to the Windows 3.1 to Windows 95. That was a com- that was a complete transformation. Of the that, that was a complete transformation. Yeah. But did anybody at any point in any one of the pre- previous iterations did anyone ha- ever have to ask you how do you reboot the device? There was but, the, <laughs> but back then too. Yeah. But back yeah. then too there was no internet to ma- to hear mass hysteria of people complaining. I'm sure there were right. there were large but, I mean, amounts. There was, there was a button that said shut down or mm-hmm. reboot or restart. Now you have to go and you have to swipe to get to the control panel to find the button that says power, then to select it. And if you don't know that you got to go through three swipes in order to shut, you know, to, to just to cause a simple reboot, you're going to have issues. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's my, my issue with, with, with the Windows 8 release as compared to the Apple release. Apple releases two OSs because they're two different platforms, whereas Microsoft is trying to jam two platforms into one and and saying, using it as, well, it's ubiquitous. It doesn't matter if it's a desktop, if it's a tablet, or if it's a phone device. And all three devices are different. They all function differently. So why not have some sort of line of demarcation and say, okay, a tablet runs this, a desktop slash laptop runs that. If it's not a touch device, Windows 8 is not an enjoyable experience. No, no. And, so, that's, and that's why you, I don't think you have touch yet with Apple. You have them trickling in the iOS uh, functionality, you know, with the launch pad, with notifications, stuff like that. But it's little by little so they can do it right. Versus to- Windows just said, well, you're familiar with it because all of you people with Windows phones and your Xboxes. Uh, so obviously we can jump into thing, you know, both feet first with this version. I think they just did it. They did a horrible job of teaching people. There's well, no so, tutorial. So they, that's they, part of it. And Jobs himself said, they asked him in a, in, a, in a keynote before he died, they asked him, is there going to be a, a, a uh, touch iMac? And his response was, touch gives good, uh, what, what was the, the, the exact line? It, it was, uh, uh, touch gives uh, a good demo. Mm-hmm. That was it. Mm-hmm. Touch gives good demo. Now, when you think about it for, for if for any kind of extended period of time, with you holding your arm out doing this in front of an iMac or a laptop, even mm-hmm. it, it gets it, it would get tedious real quick. So I, I don't. I just don't think that the you know it, the 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 laptops that are detachable and it becomes a tablet. That's a different story. Mm-hmm. I just think that the laptop slash, you know, just the laptop running Windows 8 isn't quite there yet. Okay. Personal opinion. I, I think Microsoft bet too heavily on the proliferation of touchscreen devices. I think now you're seeing, I think when Windows 8 launched, they were hoping that the number of touch devices being pushed out to market were what they were today. Mm -hmm. Um, Going in and building this OS, obviously, it wasn't something they built in a year. It was built over time. Um, So I think they they have, they they hedged their bets in a lot of wrong areas, that being one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, I think over time, what they're trying to do, and it's interesting because Microsoft's definitely taken a page out of the Apple and Google book and pushing out not just fix packs, but they're calling them updates now. Next month update. So we went eight, eight, and then eight point one. Eight point one update one will come out next month. And from what I'm hearing, the power issue that, that they're obviously hearing a lot of people say this. They're actually moving the power button to the modern UI interface in the upper right. Um, and there was the. I, I agree that the, that the the OS is not all it should have been, and and Kraus says that he loves it and he thinks it's the greatest thing in the world. But I I will, after using the Surface Pro all weekend trying to actually get it to work and, and being ready to throw it out the window, 
Um, Microsoft is a reference hardware manufacturer. I was not happy with their hardware. But, um, or was it? oh, there, there was a quote from Paul Thorat. Um, by trying to create something for everyone, you've created nothing for anyone. So, and that's where I think they kind of hit with this. And I think you're going to see over pr probably every three months, there's going to be a major update to the OS to try to fix UI yeah, and, and issues. Th that's kind of, I mean, and Throck basically said the same thing I said. It's, you know what, maybe there should have been two OSs, you know, and taking a page out of Apple's book where there's iOS and there's OS X and, and ha have them each stand on their own, uh, on their own being because, you know, especially if you're talking about a tablet that's underpowered that your advertising is going to run like a desktop, I, I, I'm going to have to, you know, yeah, you're going to have to show me that. The Surface Pro runs close to a desktop. I'll, I'll definitely give it that, and especially in the new Surface Pro 2 with the Haswell chipset. It definitely runs extremely close to a desktop. Now, when you put it in performance mode, obviously you you could potentially lose battery life. Um, the Surface RT what, device... What about heat? I, I have no heat issues with uh, with Surface Pro. Okay. I, I don't have. I, I just haven't used one, and that's why I'm I'm, I'm asking an opinion. I uh, yeah. I'm, I mean the the. I'll, I'll be honest with you. The back because it's weird because when you think about it, it's all it's an all in one display with a, with the the thin keyboard. So when you think about like a normal laptop, and for viewers at home, I'll try to do the best at explaining this. So your 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 video or your monitor display is crammed onto the same piece as your as like what you would normally have is the bottom part where your keyboard is. So at the back, if you were to look at your keyboard on a laptop where it normally is and the laptop gets warm on your lap behind the number keys, um, oh, and there's a picture of it. Up where the video is, up where, up where that camera is, so I don't know if you can move your cursor up there and kind of swirl around it. Right there, like right in there is where it gets warm. Um, which is, I'm pretty sure, where the processor so, is. So it's like the top of the screen, basically. It's the top of the screen, whereas, but that's also normally but, where what's sitting on your lap, where the processor okay. is. Okay. So it, it seems like it's kind of like, 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 like you know, on an iMac, like I have here, like the top is always super, mm -hmm. super hot, right? right? Um, so that it's the same kind of issue. Um, I thought. In, I'm looking at the two, but maybe the first one was different. I felt like there was more venting around the edges. There's around the the rim on the top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there, it looks there's like, a vent. It, it looks like, for whatever, it looks like it's smoothed over a little bit when it comes to this version. Uh, because we're looking at the Surface 2, of course. And yeah. that's not the, yeah, that's not the Pro. I think the Surface... Oh, it's the RT. I got you. Okay. Yeah, that's the RT device. Okay. I want to say the vent is down on the side near the... Kick yeah, looks like there's something. No, actually, area. it looks like an expansion port or something. Yeah. That may be the memory and uh, a no, micro yeah. SD well, there card. There you go, right there. That little bit there. Hey, yeah. hi, audio people. And that's an, that's an arm. That, yeah. That's an arm processor, like the like a um, iPad is or Android device. So okay, so it's not gonna, pretty it's good. Gonna, so the RT is not going to generate that much heat, but of course we're talking about the Pro in particular. Yeah. So um, I like I, I again I still go to uh, you know it feels like. Um, you know, you're talking about like split OS, uh, you know, iOS established something there with the phone. They moved it up something bigger with the tablet, whereas Windows doesn't have the, we taught you how to do it on your phone and these other devices. And now we're bringing it, we're marrying it together. Yeah, they just jumped too quick. It was too big of a bet. Uh, and they didn't ease anybody into it. And now they have to uh, retract. And then it, it's like, we gotta, we gotta pull back and try to get another running start in a couple years, you know? And, and it's a shame because I mean it's not altogether. It is not a bad system. When you get it, like when 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 my grandfather is saying, "Oh, you just do this," and I'm playing with this because he got a, like a touch Windows 8 laptop. And I'm like, "Oh, so I just I, oh I just hold down and, just, and I get all the delete and whatever functions just like if I was on the iOS. Like then then it clicked for me, mm -hmm. you know. And and it was like so if you're coming over from an iPad and you get a Windows thing, I don't think it's too bad of a general getting around issue but again like if you get a cheap three four hundred dollar laptop that doesn't have that touch 
is going to be worth this. You're going to be so but, frustrated. Well, here's another question. Now, my, my grandson came over and I was able to hand him my iPad too. And within minutes he was playing games and, and closing them and switching games and, and whatnot. And the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the uh, adaptability mm -hmm. w w f for the, for lack of a better word, where they, where a person doesn't need to have anybody show them, you know, that's where the iPad excels yes. as, as opposed to the Microsoft, because no matter how you do it with the uh, Windows 8, you have to have somebody show you, this is how you do this. This is how you do that versus here, here's an iPad, here's an iPhone, have a good time. And it does feel like and the problem is also because it is windows, and you hand it to the kid, you're like, well, how deep can he go down the rabbit hole and screw things up? Because it is still Windows. But on the flip side, and, and this is the where I, where I constantly run into problems trying to do my best to live off of a tablet, you, video editing and Photoshop are my two things that I still can't do quick enough on, a, on an iPad. Have not, unfortunately, I don't have new enough an iPad to try mm -hmm. with, with iMovie, but I've been like after, I like how it is on the phone with iMovie. If you're doing quick just crops and clips That's true. If you want to do anything beyond what you can do on the desktop and I get into the same issue with, with Photoshop. So, so handing someone a device to consume or to play games is one thing. Handing someone a device to be productive well, I mean, I it's, it's, not gonna be, it's not going to be. It's not going to be. We're talking at, that's apples and oranges because we're actually yeah. talking about whether, you know, uh, you're you're talking about being at a pro level. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. at, at a pro level, you have a level of 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 expectance of this is what I expect my this device to do. Whereas, uh, you know, it, it, that that that's I, I I think the difference in our in in the conversation is. I'm, ex I'm I'm talking about just you general usability for somebody who's never handled the device before to, you know, I mean, if you gave somebody who is a graphics designer, okay, you can either have this Windows 8 device or you can have this iMac and both of them are running Photoshop and you've been trained on Photoshop on both, which one are you going to grab? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that it that is a it, a more legitimate comparison. But but when you're talking about someone who's never seen the device and just the the out of the box, turn it on, do something with it. Apple has them beat. Oh, definitely. I think the Apple definitely has them beat. And I think the one thing that could have solved this for Microsoft was would have been got, get rid of the desktop. Mm -hmm. If you just had modern UI with the App Store. You'd have fresh paint, and you'd have a bunch of apps, and just run them in the modern UI. The problem is they obviously have the business backend to worry about and trying to run legacy applications. If if you handed someone a Windows 8 device, be it that it was touch, and all you had was that modern menu system, sure, and that's only where the apps. But they, they tried to be backwards compatible. So, and that that's been Microsoft's. That's the stigma that Microsoft has had since 1990. Let's go 1998, because it's okay. Well, now we can't change the UI because everybody's used to the UI. So the entire UI with the start button in the lower left that's been around since 1995 because you know nobody likes change, and that's that's the the whole ball of wax. I work at a place that I'm not going to talk about where I work at, but people hate change. And if you make some stupid, inane, you know, we went from the uh, the uh, Windows 2000, um, you know, uh, toolbar, where it had the toolbar. We were changing the, the XP toolbar to look like the 2000 toolbar because these people – didn't want any change. The Their management way. says, "Well, we want we want them to be able to tell that it's XP. So put the Crayola key, uh, the Crayola um, uh, 
menu back. As soon as we did that, our, our help desk lit up, people losing their minds, because we changed the button from gray to green. <laughs> And you know, so, so that's, now a circle. that's the mentality yeah. of a lot yeah. of people is they don't like change. And when you make a dra especially with that, a drastic change like they did, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that there's a, a whole bunch of pushback and that, and the, well, we'll put the, the start button down in the corner. That's the start button was in the corner in, in eight in windows eight. You just had to hover over it. Mm -hmm. And then in eight one, they just made it so you could see it all the time. <laughs> I, I do like, I, and actually, you know, so this computer, I, I, I thought it was kind of funny. This, this is a Lenovo computer we got here, um, a gaming PC. Actually, we ended up with, uh, and they have a start button kind of software that they put in here. Did they put? Did they use the public ones? There's two. Um, Stardock. Not Stardock. It is Pokey. P O K K I. Okay, that must be. Something I turn it off any time I can get because I'm gonna click that thing by accident. Um, but it was kind of like as I was going in and shutting off all the extra applications so we can do this video stuff. Um, it, it was kind of like wow, we just really. And I wonder how many do that, you know, uh, to try to make sure you know they can at least try to please their customers a little bit by having some kind of home start button go on. So, Stardock Stardock Start Eight is one of the 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 main ones. And there's another one that someone I people were talking about, and it's funny because they're actually in the App Store, the Windows App Store. Yeah. Okay. Like if you go if you go look for for Star Dock or there's I think Classic Shell. Um. This says it's free software for Classic Shell. I don't know, but anyway, there's a, there's a bunch of apps out there where people have made, created, recreated the start the start menu. Um. Will they bring it back? I'll be surprised if Microsoft completely reverses this one. But maybe they will. I mean, we're only spring of 2015. We're not too far off from the next version of Windows. <laughs> we'll see what well the, the fact that they brought Gates back it shows that, that they're scared. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, you know, he's not the, the chairman of the board or whatever, but for, for them to bring Gates back in, in, into the fold and say, Hey, Bill, you know, what do you think? The, 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 you know, it's the, the line that the, the ship sink, you know, the ship sink and, and they got to get somebody to point it in the right direction. Mm -hmm. well, so, and maybe uh, it's that people now have a choice, a, a more mainstream choice. I mean, hell, you got, I mean, yeah, you got Apple and Windows, but we do also have Android and in Chromebooks I, and, I, and Chromebooks, Linux. Um, and I know, uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu itself, the, the newest versions of Ubuntu are ridiculously well. They, I mean, yeah, on pretty much any new hardware, they run like a champ. And even old hard hardware. I just updated the, the 13 on, um, on a, uh, my, you know, 0506, uh, laptop. You know, that's running a Centrino processor. It runs runs like a dream for just getting around, you know, Chrome and stuff like that. Um, and I think a lot of people are jumping on that bandwagon to say, ah, I'm not too crazy about this Windows 8. I'm not too crazy about getting a new computer, but I'm running Windows XP and I'm kind of worried about that. Oh, what's this Ubuntu thing? Um, and I think they're able to get, especially it's getting a little easier to install it. Um, generally, yeah, you can download it, and, and, and it's still kind of hard to make a you know USB key or CD or something like that. But you can just order a disc, and boom, do it, and you're, and you're good to go from there. You, you but, but the other thing is, it was always the hardest part, always for Ubuntu or any l version of Linux, was always getting the wireless to work. And they figured out whatever magic sauce it took, and the Ubuntu now with wireless just. You know, if you have – it was – you couldn't have WPA. You ha could only use web keys and da da da, da. They fixed all that. And now the, the laptop that you had that you were running XP on, I have the opportunity to either A, go buy me another computer because I need more RAM in order to run Windows 8, or I can go and just buy – go download a disk and – put another two or three years worth of life into this computer, mm -hmm. this laptop. Mm -hmm. 
and, and it's pretty good with that. I know we are driving uh, Kraus nuts in the chat room here. <laughs> uh, Chilla, you've been engaging. What's going? What's what? what well, is, he's what is he's his just, head he, explode. He's he's just a huge Windows Eight fan. <laughs> now he's got good points. He's talking about yeah. you know he he's on the tablet. He's on the touch side. He loves it, and it's a good interface. I think it's a fine interface. And, and it, just the bridge sucks. And the interesting thing too is, is the coming across uh, uses a Windows phone, mm-hmm. and Microsoft has definitely taken the the transition from Windows Phone to their other devices. Much if you were if you were original even iPod user back when the iPods were FireWire, mm-hmm. like that seamless transition. They've definitely done a lot with that. The one thing I'll also say. After having to rebuild a Mac and rebuild a new Windows 8 device, when you, if as long as you link to your Microsoft account with your with your Windows device, when you refresh, you just log back in and like your background comes back. If you're putting your documents in the cloud, all your documents come back. Like the refresh, moving from machine to machine. Mm-hmm. Like if I were to log in on your machine with my create another account and link it my my background would come down all my documents would come down everything it was well, that was a, that was of, actually something that bill gates had talked about 10, 20, uh, 10 years ago it was the past they, that he was calling a passport at the time but when you signed up for hotmail or and became live mail became whatever and but when you signed up for that that added all this functionality so the they were gearing up for that twenty years ago. When they had it in Windows NT four, they had roaming profiles from the corporate it, side that you could. But, yeah, but that that kind of that it, it was close, but it wasn't the same thing. That sounds like uh, everything Microsoft does. Yeah, <laughs> it was close, but it wasn't the same thing. the 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 problem is with Windows Phone is if you have to manage it at a enterprise level. Uh, Microsoft, for whatever reason, doesn't release any APIs for the, which is odd because most of Microsoft's clientele are enterprise clients. Now, here's the thing. For and once again, I work at a, at a large enterprise, and we have to manage phones, and we have. You know, and in, in, in this day of uh, BYOD and people are coming in with Android phones and they're coming in with Apple phones and they're coming in with Windows phones and whatnot, and they want to get on the internal wireless network. Now, for me to put an iPhone on the internal wireless network takes me that long. It, 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 it's actually the simplest thing. I can pass it a certificate using WPA2 Enterprise Edition. Works like a champ. Android, not so much. Some versions work, others don't because there's a you know there's fracture within Android, and based on the carrier and what overlays the carrier does, that's you know here or that you know iffy. Windows Phone doesn't work at all. I mean, it does not work at all, and that is to re- for it to request a, C- a, a, a certificate from a Windows certificate server. See, and I think Microsoft wants you to manage their phone with a management console. If you uh, if you look at Microsoft's Intune, um, their their newest version of SCCM and Intune will manage the phones. If you look at companies yeah, then, like AirWatch that, that, or Mobile Iron, those companies but, that's the the device can be boarded to a management platform. It's not meant but, to be managed off platform. But the but then at that time, at, at that point, you're mandating, okay, we can have BYOD, but it's not your OD. It's the device that we tell you can you have, and that device has to be this type, or you're going to have to have a staff that manages the SCCM version of the Windows device in addition to mobile iron, good, whatever technology you use to manage your Android slash uh, iPhone devices, so you know it, it, it's 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 really bad that that you know that they can't all play in the same sandbox, mm-hmm. and it, it, yeah, 
to be honest with you, you know, for the, you know, Apple being the walled garden and all the, the nasty thing, you know, the things that get said about how Apple is so, you know, t tight to the vest. Apple's released the most APIs of any vendor to uh, mobile device managed. Uh, well, they've been around for seven years. But There's something to say for age on that. Yeah, yeah. Versus, I mean, Windows really hit the reset button. I mean, they were there first, but and, and yeah, and their older devices. If you look at Pocket PC, mm -hmm. was really there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you're but, looking at. Uh, I, I'm talking about. Device. I mean, today managing a it, from a mobile device management for a large enterprise today, and and that's I, I, that's what I handle for for where I work. And I, I think you're looking at a, a two year old device versus a seven year old device. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at a company that has grown, and the one thing to say for Apple is that, I mean, your device is three years older or older, you might as well throw it away because you're not going to get anything new yeah, for it. I mean, that's the thing. Apple's really good about saying, you know, in enterprise, in personal things, say it, there is a cutoff point. If you're beyond this, you will not get X, Y, and Z. Uh, you will not enjoy these benefits. We want you to buy a new thing. You can enjoy up until X, and, and there's a, I've heard really good conversations about if you go and take your 2007 iMac sitting here, and it came with Leopard, Leopard. I throw Leopard on that; it's gonna run like a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, it's made for the software it came with, um, and you can try, kind of push it. And I ran into a trouble when I got the Mavericks, but even that, like, and even really, it 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 will run Mavericks. Yeah, but it, it, one of the problems was like the Wirecast stuff, um, but but there's still a line. Like they they were really good about Snow Leopard and on. They didn't cut out any new Macs since. If it ran Snow Leopard, it will probably run Mavericks, and they're really good about that. There's a certain that that certain line of technology, like like even saying, why does my iPad not have uh, anything above iOS five? You know, it's as powerful, if not more so, than a 3GS phone that got six. You know, but it's saying no, we're not going to do that. You got to have a camera. You got to have X, Y, and Z. We're moving on. You know, and you're left behind. Which it'll be interesting to see because I think the iPad 2, which they were still selling, mm -hmm. I think we're going to hear an announcement I think real they are, soon. I think they are still selling it. They, they, still, sell, they still sell it new. Mm -hmm. I, it's not, And it's not even a refurb. No. Schools are buying them up different. I think we're going to see that that dwindle off. And the, as an iPad 3 owner, I will say that was the, the roughest hardware distribution that I think Apple's done in a while. Was 3? The iPad 3 was the first yeah. Retina display. Because the Retina one, yeah. The, yeah. The, the processor was underpowered. It just, it's battery life sucked when you get to iOS 7. Mm -hmm. It'll run, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. But it's like it's like if you were to run iOS 6 on your, on your iPad hey, Gen man. 1. If I roll back my iPhone Edge to iOS one, it's gonna run. Beautiful. And I bet you, I bet you, one of the main reasons they did that is because the first gen iPad didn't have an accelerometer. Yeah. And I, I bet you that's. I bet you it was more of a hardware. That in the camera and yeah, and, and you could say yeah, I had the same hardware as a three GS, but it's a bigger screen, so it'd probably be more stressful when I got there. Still, I don't feel good about it. I feel like I got left behind. You can feel like I, got left. I feel like I got it's left five behind. years old. It's five. It's really five. That's not five years old, really. Because they had a double release this spring. One. This spring. spring it'll be five. It's a five-year-old device. That is crazy. Like next month or the month after. It's crazy. Um. Anyways, moving on. Hey, Ward, you got an awesome thing. Well, I do. Don't you? Wait, who put who, who put Kinder in here? That's my app. Oh, that's your app. I'm sorry, I misread this. First, I thought it said yeah. Tinder. Wow, you, you just shocked me. I was, I'm, I'm looking around at my desk for something to talk about. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, well, well, let's see. I, I got this. This is nice. Um, we can talk about we can talk about that. Uh, was, that your go wrist, ahead. was that your wrist rest? <laughs> no, actually, this is really a cool thing. Uh, this is a Bluetooth speaker that does... Uh, that you can hook to your phone or you can hook to your computer through Bluetooth. You can do conference calls on it. It does audio both ways. Um, it, it's really nice if you have to do a lot of conference calls and it's better than the, you know, putting your phone on speakerphone and, it, and uh, let's try to get in the camera here. It, it's only about that big. It, nice little Bluetooth, holds a decent charge, runs about a day. What, what's and it called? You plug it in, 
and it costs about 60 bucks. What's it called? Boom Bar. Okay, we'll go check that out. Uh, if you guys want to go look that out. So, Kinder. <laughs> I just granted it access to my contacts. That could be bad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kinder is an app that makes me so very happy. It is. It was, it was all based on making the world a better place and bringing smiles to your friends. Uh, these two guys, Matt and Josh, uh, essentially wanted to bring you know a little more happiness into everybody's life and it, it's just it's an amazing app that you can send images um and gifts with thoughtful messages um you can even create your own and it's all kinds of they're basically uh, set up in different categories if you don't have something that you you know particularly want to say you can choose any one of the options uh you can send it to um any of your friends even if it's on iphone right now just iphone there's a waiting list for um Android devices, but it's uh, you can send it from an iPhone to anything that's pretty much web enabled, and they'll be able to read it or be able to get it. And I just I have this to. This is the first thing I found on it as a baby with apparently a spoon in its mouth. Yes, mm -hmm. gifs. I love gifs. So gifs, gifs. See, I think it's gif. Yeah, I, I, it stands for graphics, but in a something format, it's gif. First word, and it's graphic. So this is, uh, I mean, I mean, is this, is this more than just graphics. another another place to, to share gifts or? Um, no, I, I think it, it goes beyond that. It, it, it's it's really like I said, it, it, one of the coolest things is, is the fact that you can. S it, what they want to do is kind of just make the world a better place, one person at a time. By you, let's say you're having a bad day, and I send you uh, some sort of goofy picture either I found there, or maybe something that's. Um, you took yourself. Now, how do I send it to someone? Okay, I'm going to Sorg. I'm sending you a... I'm sending you one. I don't know what this is going to do. <laughs> Let your friends know who's sending... Uh, it wants me to verify my phone number. Yeah, it wanted me to do that, too. Like I said, don't. Oh, I got a trophy. Oh, yeah. there's achievements. There are achievements unlocked. I knew you I got the those. teal balloon. And uh, essentially, you can keep track in a leaderboard to amongst your friends um, how many you've sent to your friends and how many friends you've made happy. So did it send him a text? Did it, you... No, it sent me a notification, it looks like. Okay. <clears throat> but how did it know who you were? Your contacts? Well, like, it sent you a notification. I used... That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. So that's under the congratulations. You can't see it says congratulations, <clears throat> and it is uh, Barney Simpson giving a thumbs up in gift form. So um, if you go if you go back to their page, um, go back to their website, and if you go under uh, up in the top left hand corner for blog, I'm sorry, top right hand corner in the main page, and if you scroll down a little bit, this is the top ten most popular compliments of 2013. Uh, the number ten is if sharks decided to dedicate a week to someone, it would be you. Uh, you're like Netflix, an endless source of entertainment. Uh, I'm trying to go through my favorite ones. My, if my friends were Care Bears, you'd be Funshine Bear. <laughs> and there's a little picture. You're so likable, even honey badgers care about you, and they don't, and they aren't really known about for that. Um, you remind me of Frosted Flakes because you're great. And of course, number one is you're awesome. So while it is, it's a free app. And all you do is just you make somebody's day either a little brighter or a little better, and then you pass it on. The idea is it's almost paying it forward. You pass it on to them, they pass it on to somebody else, and everybody has a better day. I think it's really fantastic. Yeah, so that's Kinder. Kinder. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, very Web two uh, two point oh e. Yes. Uh, quite. With no e. Mm -hmm. K i n d r. If you want to check it out. So is it said it's in the App Store? It's in the App Store. Like iPhone? I said, there's an Android wait list right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is free in the app store and um, if you send it to somebody with an Android phone they'll still receive it they just won't be able to do anything with it is it, is it as a text I presume um, I'm not sure I have not sent it to anybody we may have to check into that but I, I didn't Wait, I, what was the question sorry whether uh, if um, you send it to um, an Android device if you send it to an Android device because it's not on you can receive them but you can't respond or yeah I'd imagine it would just show up as a file, kind of like a little. Mm -hmm. But do they have to have the app loaded? No, because you can't get the app on there yet. Well, I just sent it to you. Did you get it on your? I got it as a notification, cause, but, but I just installed the app and connected it to my. But on your on your everything. Nexus Seven. I don't have it down here. 
Like maybe uh, you would have gotten in. I sent something to Katie. Yeah, good son. Oh, you did. And what well, happened? Okay, it shows up as a text on as a phone number. Okay. Uh, it says Michael Sorg wants to brighten your day. Open your message on Kinder, and I click the link. And I get. Doo -doo -doo. Sorry, it's being very slow. Live demos, ladies website. and gentlemen. Yep. <laughs> pew pew. Oh, and I've got a dog. It says hug. So it does pop up like you guys see it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I um, like in a web browser. And it says I can respond with a smile. Let's see. Did you get a smile for me? Yep. You got smile points. So now that you, it's kind of like a yep, and For me, it just shows up as notifications. Yep. Shows okay. up as a text for me. So. And like I said, I can respond with a smile and then join the wait list for right now. On my awesome. Phone. So go check that out. Kinder.com. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, my awesome thing of the week is, uh, and, and, and Chilla, I'd like to get your kind of thoughts on some of these, since you know a little bit more about uh, iPhone development. Um, you know, the biggest thing missing, you know, uh, Android people can get their emulators and everything to play their Nintendo games, arcade games, Game Boy, uh, whatever, whatever they like. Uh, and you haven't been able to do that really with iPhones, iOS, uh, unless you jailbreak it. Uh, so there was one article I saw out here, and there's another way you can do this with a little bit of a trick. Um, but this one alleges to, from Touch Arcade, uh, tells us uh, how to play NES games on your iPhone without jailbreaking via Web NES. If you just do a search for Web NES, this is easy to find. Just uh, you can find this Ch Touch Arcade article if you want to see how it how it works out. Uh, you just go to this site, and, and it's basically a web app, and uh, you you can install it. So it looks like an app. You see web, uh, the red one there at the bottom if you're on video. And it opens up. And the cool thing is, so you're like, how do I get you know, my ROMs into this? My legally acquired ROMs. I completely own Mega Man 2 that I tried to load here. Uh, but they do have some kind of open source ones already loaded. You're not going to see that on the screen. Um, but you can connect it directly to your Dropbox. So all you have to do is put your ROMs in the Dropbox, and it'll connect to that. Um, and now let me let me try it again. I, I restarted it because I was having actually issues loading it. Is this the GBA for iOS? That's the other one I went. Oh, to sorry, talk about. I and, apologize. And actually, since I've started using this, I actually can't. Like, I get into Dropbox in a web interface. I select my thing, and the choose button doesn't work for some reason. So I'm trying to figure that part out. Um, but it it did work one time. Uh, sound doesn't work unless you use headphones. So it's still kind of. You know, a little, a little buggy, but you know, I, I, you got to think. You know, uh, eventually, this is going to be, uh, you know, get get even better as emulators usually do. Now, the one you found, and I saw something else like this, but it was like multiple emulators. You roll your clock back on your phone because apparently there's something with an update, um, and I think this hmm. one's done the same way as this GBA um, emulator. It's another web app. You, you roll it back, you install it. Now, the one I saw before, you went to a website, and you can install several different emulators. And I still had the thing on here um, today. Uh, but you would get this little spot for an app. And it's all these cross hatches, which looks like it might be like the kind of placeholder. I didn't put art here yet for my app kind mm -hmm. of graphic. Um, but you would go to the site, and you would download in that place one of your emulators. And again, I think that attached the Dropbox and everything, and you could bring them down. How are they doing this? So the the web nest looks like it's some kind of online HTML. Well, I mean, think about it, HTML5 has gotten a lot better with that graphic capabilities, etc. Um, the the thing that gets sticky with the whole Apple device and and, and the whole jailbreaking for an emulator is that Apple, in their terms and services agreement, for developers says they're not allowed to put an emulator in the app store. I'm guessing that's some kind of HTML5 interface. Yeah, that I'm then, not going through the app store <clears throat> now. I, I just right. go to a page. It's a I, website. I, I'm in Safari and and you save it just like like forecast.io pops up as like a full app instead of like in a browser, but it really is just running Safari. Mm -hmm. Right. I think like if you look at like um is it that unta un is it untapped the beer Mm -hmm. check-in thing mm -hmm. that whole app is all back-ended which is how they can quickly roll out updates for windows phone ios android etc it's pretty much a shell on the device that then 
contacts a backend HTML5 system. I'm guessing someone figured out a way. And think about HTML5 and Java. But you could probably load some kind of jar in there. I'm sure someone has a Java thing for for emulating some of the basic systems like Nintendo and Game Boy. Um, I mean, I have I have I've played a lot of emulators and have emulated on a lot of different hardware. I think us not seeing it publicly available for the iPhone is due to the restriction that Apple has. Mm -hmm. But I'm guessing as browser and 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 that technology everything becoming browser based i mean look at look at what google has done with google docs and they they showed it could be done mm. apple has now put and made it actually look really really nice and it started to enable a lot of the things that google did but with the apple flare and you imagine like because i mean hpl5 can get very impressive if you look at some of the chrome experiments um, when we were, when I, I taught an animation class last year and we got into, uh, when the, uh, new Oz movie came out, like there's some pretty deep multimedia stuff you can do with it. If they start porting that over to be able to run in the, in the phone browser, it's going to be amazing. Have you ever played with, um, director macro macromedia? Director? I had three quarters in macromedia director. <laughs> so, so, you know, director with a timeline and everything yes, like that and yes. creating everything to be interactive. Yes. Fl the, I mean, and flash is similar. Flash is similar. So flash was like, okay, let's take director and web enable it. Yeah. So this company and there it's and for this, uh, dark, dark was, when, when you could do web with director, it wasn't terribly optimized. That's what, if you remember shockwave as a plugin about 10 years ago, that that's what you would develop that in. And actually, when you sometimes when you look at Flash plugins, it's also labeled as Shockwave. Um, they were kind of sister technologies, I'd say. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they they had a timeline, but it was just the way. Um, but they were they were kind of different thinking of doing the same thing. I'm trying to. I can't remember what director's language was. They called it something. And they had their own like little language. I think it was action script. Just something like, like that. it was a version of action script, just like Flash has. So there, there's a company called Tumult, T U M U L T dot com. Um, they've taken the concept of director and Flash, and they've actually built something that at a glance reminded me of director. And it, but it assembles um, HTML5. So you have the timeline with interactive and keyframes, and you can tween. But it's all HTML5 based. Mm. <laughs> don't worry about it. So, so it, I don't know. I think you're going to get to the point where HTML5 visual or WYSIWYG browser or WYSIWYG editors are going to get to the point where everybody can easily use them and all the toolkits going to be there for you to expose. Mm -hmm. And you're going to, they're going to take everything that you think of, Oh, I need an app for that. And sooner or later, it's going to be, and that's probably, I've, I've had some discussions about this with, uh, actually with, with Josh Sager, who's an insane coder. Um, and there are tools and, and I got, I have the, uh, the plan with Adobe that you can get all the tools and, and they do have like HTML5 coding stuff, but a lot of it, cause I, my, my big thing was like, well, so how are people doing this? How are people putting these things together? Cause there wasn't anything that made sense in my mind. We, I mean, when we did the animation class, we're like, this is how you take CSS and make an object move in code. Mm -hmm. So versus flash when you get into flash i don't you know look up a flash interface there's tutorial videos on youtube but you get a you get a wizzy wig not a wizzy wig but you get a, a gui you know mm -hmm. you get a timeline just like if you're in final cut or iMovie, you got a little timeline that you're working with right and, and there's more to it of course um but when you get an html5 i think for the most part you're getting into the code like you were saying w what made you say i take this point and i take this point and do what's called tweening to make it move from this to this it would mm -hmm. just fill in the blanks of those frames from this position to this position um you're sitting there and saying okay this is this coordinate on the screen x y z access sometimes because you can do 3d Three animation coding and, and it gets pretty nutty um unfortunately um last thing i knew with those you know discussing with people i knew about the tools um those adobe tools spit out some pretty garbage code 
Mm-hmm. That's not very efficient at all. And thinking back to how Dreamweaver handed HTML, I'm not surprised because you would always get just horrible, horrible junk code uh, when you spit out a page uh, that was that was coded at Dreamweaver using their WYSIWYG. So, but, I mean, that's always it's always a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you can either develop it really, really quick. Yeah. Or you can sit there and write a code line by line. Yeah, or you can optimize. It. Yeah. So, so I. I I, I think we're going to get to the point where you're going to see. I'm still not sold on HTML5 from a speed factor, and obviously no internet connection, limited mm-hmm. capability. Whereas, uh, and certain apps you can keep playing offline, and that's something I think Google's taken into consideration, and, and you're going to see Google really push that whole offline web browsing HTML5 experience a lot further. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, uh, by the way, we have the founder of Kinder in the chat room. Uh, I'm really? Uh, it's, Kinder dot, it's Kinder.me. Yeah, so, sorry, Matt. So our bad on that one. Our bad <laughs> we on apologize. That one. Uh, yeah, it's right there. Uh, so, so thanks for that. Uh, so, so we really kind of filled it with our awesome things of the week this week. We're at the hour point here. Uh, Ward, thanks for joining us. Hey, no problem. I appreciate the, uh, the invite. Call me back anytime. All right, and let's, yeah, let us know uh, if you launch anything new over there. Of course, check out uh, Steel City Resistance that he helps out on, mm-hmm. and of course, we'll have, we'll have Hutch on to talk about that a little bit more. And next I think we've been mispronouncing it too. Are it's we kinder. kinder? Kinder, like kindness. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the whole app. It's just adorable and just. It's so nice to be nice. And- it is. <laughs> it is. Um, awesome. Uh, Dutters, at K Dutters on the Twitters. Mm-hmm. And at Chilla. At Chilla. What's coming up this week? What is coming up this week? I don't remember. I have it in the list. <laughs> Xbox One released an update, which they're releasing another one. Mm-hmm. Samsung's pushing Android 4.4 to almost all their devices. Like, if you bought a device in, like, the last two years... They're pretty much going to ship the new version of Android, nice. which I, I thought that was pretty impressive. And the World Mobile Conference is February 24th through the 27th, so I'm sure. Where does that fall in the week? Will we make it for Tuesday? There, I mean, there, everybody will be everybody who's not Apple and Microsoft will be releasing information next week. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that I wanted to cover is it'll be interesting because KitKat for KitKat, which is Android 4.4 is trying to remove media card writing. Really? Google wants to kill the expansion card, which, which was the like, differentiator. Which is the whole reason people <clears throat> say they want an Android device, because so they can expand on it. Expandable memory mm-hmm. and battery. Replaceable battery were the big, oh, app, Apple devices and don't none have of those. The, none of the and Nexus <laughs> devices do it anymore. <laughs> none, so. none of the Nexus devices have removable battery or expandable storage. So there you go with that. So it, it'll be int- not on the same page with you guys. That'll be that'll be something to keep keep tabs on. I think in 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 upcoming episodes is what I think we're going to start hearing about Google and their plans for four four and above. I think we're gonna we're gonna start to hear rumblings. Mm. And I gotta I gotta get my Chromecast out of the box. Yeah, it's really crap, dude. <laughs> that should that should be upcoming. <laughs> I live on my Chromecast. I hate when I have to boot up my Xbox because it doesn't have Amazon yet. Mm. For all those, for all well, those and see movies. now, now that now I, I, I'm making a promise by next week, I will have rented my first Amazon movie and watched it over the Chromecast. You're gonna hip it? I am. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be like the biggest proponents of that. Um, hey, you had something else in here. Did I? Tech cocktail. Did you mention that's that? That's me. That's her. Oh, that's you. You got to read the right hand side. <laughs> I have like five <laughs> jobs over here. <laughs> What's the talk tech cocktail? Uh, <laughs> the tech cocktail mixer is coming up in April. Um, it is a national thing. The tech cocktail thing is a website where essentially you can go learn about new tech and what's going on. And there's articles about uh, pretty much a variety of things. Um, in April, they are coming, they're ha- hosting a mixer in Pittsburgh. And nice. what they do is they kind of, um, they have startups. It, it's similar to what we've seen with the startups in the city. And um, they kind of, there'll be startups there demonstrating. There'll also be investors kind of put in, in, pro- in future employees kind of a deal it's, it's getting people together who are interested in tech and um, new companies and kind of getting them on the right path um, 
it's a it's nice because it's it is a mixer it's more of a chit chat thing where you get to kind of um talk with other people uh they're supposed to be um fun guests i'm not quite they don't haven't listed the guests yet but they're supposed to be some techie guests mm -hmm. there um it's only 15 bucks if you buy it early the tickets and it becomes 25 bucks later on but uh, i i don't want to say but a certain member of our yin's team said it was good okay it was someone that yes someone, are you going Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going. Uh, I have a couple other people that I know are going, so I, I don't know if that's a uh, a reason to go or not. Uh, I, may, I may show up. Yeah, it looks it looks like a lot of fun, and it looks I, like... I like this line... Do you line, have more uh, information about... No, there is not something okay. we have thus far. I, I, I like this line here. Work might be from 9 to 5, but business happens from 5 to 9. Mm-hmm. Is, is apparently the tagline for this. So, uh, what to expect? Startups demoing casual expo style, engaging conversations, local technology, all stars, celebrities, and thought leaders. The only term missing from that is rock stars. Um, so, yes. How about gurus? Hey, we could be rock stars. Let's pretend. We could. We, we should get awesome cast rock star stars. Mm -hmm. Shirts. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, that feels more of a podcast camp thing, but. Um, We'll work, we'll work on that. Uh, so, uh, with that, yeah. Like a nice bowling shirt. Ooh, with our name. <laughs> Chilla. Bowling team. We should have the, the awesome back. cast bowling team. I'm in. The, the, it will have like the awesome cast logo on the front, and we'll, we'll be the rock stars on the Ooh. back. Ooh. <laughs> in turn, get on get that. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> um, hey, thanks, everybody in the chat room. Kraus, uh, Matt, the. I'll screw up his last name, Ivister. Uh, We've screwed everything else Kinder up. Kinder.me. <laughs> it's oh, not gosh. unusual, yeah. especially on this show. Yeah. Uh, and everybody else, Chachi Wheels is in there, I know. <laughs> uh, uh, everybody else that joins us here, there. Tuesday yeah. night live at SogatronMedia.com. We started to kick off this show around 6.30 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time, but we're here all night doing all kinds of geeky things at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, you can also uh, drop us a line. We're at AwesomeCast on Twitter, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com on the emails. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. Follow us. We, we're uh, sending out, uh, uh, you know, I'm bookmarking stuff all through the week that uh, we could potentially talk about on the show. Let us know what you think we should talk about on our show. Tell us your awesome thing of the week, and we'll talk about it on the show as well. Um, title options, Windows hate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks again, of course, the, the great Mike Allen, uh, helping uh, with notes and tweets all night long. Uh, we couldn't, uh, you know, I, that's how, you know, I believe that's how Kinder found us. Kinder. Kinder. You know, I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be a good trick. If you want to get like retweets and stuff from companies, we'll just continue to spell their names wrong and mispronounce them. And then they will jump on <laughs> and help us out. Name, I screwed up the name of that Angel Crush <laughs> yeah. last week. Oh, yeah. And they're like, hey, it. maybe you could fix the great video, but can you fix her name? It's like, hey, you know, I do this at like four in the morning, you know. Uh, so, so all that stuff. Thank you for the awesome chat room. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome.